So this is uh, Seven. Hello. Seven wanders the world. As Sometimes, of, yes. As a matter of fact, and he has wandered. You've wandered a lot of places in the world. A lot of places, yeah. yeah over 50 as a matter of fact, countries. he has a YouTube channel called Seven Wanders the World. It's true. Uh, just don't ever try to type that into YouTube because you'll never find me. You'll, you'll get, get all the seven wonders of the world. Wallet, wallet yeah. China. Yeah. Just type in Seven Gray, G R E Y. Seven Gray. Right up. Or maybe the link at the end of this video. There you possibly. go. <laughs> Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. This is Seven's rig over here and we're going to go do what? We're going to make kombucha today. Kombucha. This is going to be new to me. Flip on the inverter here. This is inverter? Your inverter's bigger than mine. I, I didn't know what I was buying when I bought it. I How just, many watts is that? I don't know, a bazillion. We're gonna, no. We're gonna do kombucha. Yes, kombucha. Kombucha, okay. Yep, and this is kombucha over here. Kombucha is a probiotic drink. So it's made of three parts. It's made of black tea, uh -huh. a cup of sugar, and this thing here at the top, which is called a SCOBY, and it looks sort of like a silicone wafer that's just sort of floating on the top of the tea. I see that. So this is a symbiotic culture of bacterial yeast, SCOBY. Is it, and that's the part that's really good? That you're, you're making it to get that? No, this part is creating the juice that we're going to drink. So, for instance, you could put a little cup under here and really? drink this directly yeah. out of this spigot here, and you'd be drinking raw kombucha without any fruit flavor, without any carbonation. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And this has been fermenting for seven days right now, and so this is the first ferment. And you can drink the first ferment. It just doesn't have flavor and doesn't have carbonation. So if you want flavor and carbonation, then you go an extra three or four days by adding your fruit flavor of choice, say strawberries. Today I'm going to do um, this pear. I'm going to cut it up and put it in there. And then you seal it up in bottles, like this is commercial kombucha. This is watermelon, so you could put watermelon in here instead mm -hmm. of pear. And then let it go for another three or four days, sealed with the lid and in the natural heat of the day it will just keep fermenting and carbonating in there so it carbonates itself by the fermentation exactly so that's the second fermentation is putting it in a seal bottle with your fruit for three or four days or as long as you want to carbonate it mm -hmm. but every single day you've got to release the uh, cap on this or this bottle after about two days will literally explode. Blow up. It'll blow up. Just, and you yeah. have shattered glass, which is not good. So that's my safety warning. Make sure if you're doing a second fermentation that you're bleeding off the carbonation every 24 hours. But it has to be sealed for 24 hours to compress the gas, the carbon dioxide, is it? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be doing the first and second carbonation or We'll be doing the first and the second fermentation today. So we'll be draining this out, mm -hmm. adding fruit to it, putting it in these bottles, and that starts the first ferment, or and that starts the second fermentation inside the bottles. I'll also be billet, I'll also be brewing a new batch of black tea mm -hmm. with sugar that I'll pour in here, and this will need to sit in here and be exposed to the air and be exposed to the scoby for about seven days to make some more kombucha. It's kind of like making beer. It, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And now, you haven't told me why, why. why it, it, I'm assuming it's good for you. Uh, I think there's two or three basic reasons to do kombucha. One, if you're looking to get away from sodas for something that's natural and a soda replacement. So that could be one reason. The other is this is considered a probiotic drink. So if your gut is lacking in probiotics, which is true of most North Americans, because we're eating so many processed foods and we're not having fermented foods, not enough things like pickle, pickles or yogurts or things along those lines, 
then this is a good way to get natural probiotics without taking a pill. I've had intestinal surgery and so my intestines have been damaged enough that I need to augment it by taking a probiotic pill every day so I can avoid taking the pill and have a natural ah. probiotic drink. Well, now it's starting to make sense. So, and it's super cheap. And probiotics are um, a bacteria, and it's good bacteria right. that we all have, and exactly. the more good bacteria you have, the less room there is for bad bacteria. Correct. Your guts are filled with natural probiotic stuff, and that's intended to help break down your food and help with digestion. But if you have a high processed diet of processed foods with a lot of preservatives in there, then those are not giving you natural pro probiotics and in fact damaging or killing those off. So most Americans have a very, very low amount of probiotics in their guts. I have read one time that the human body is just a host for maybe billions of organisms so population wise we are one and the rest of us individually uh, yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. is the many yeah there you go <laughs> so I'm gathering you like to repurpose things occasionally absolutely in that uh, your little lip to keep the books coming out used to be a yardstick and there's of course one more thing I'll be looking for in here seven what's that I'll be looking for a license plate in particular, maybe that one right there that says Oregon and JC Travel Stories on it. For the first fermentation, you want to brew some black tea and a cup of sugar. And mm -hmm. you can use any black tea except for Earl Grey. Earl Grey is the only black tea that has tons of oil in it. And my first two times I tried to make kombucha, which was a disaster. I did that on a YouTube video. Um, I used Earl Grey not knowing that, and I killed off my scoby. It just suffocated on that layer of oil wow. and killed the scoby. So you can use any other black tea. This is one called the Taj, and this is a black tea with orange and jasmine and bergamot. I don't know what that is. but. I don't either. Anyway, uh, you can use black teas with little fruit particles in it to give sort of a little extra zest and spin on your tea. Um, so, so step one is making the black tea. Black tea with a cup of sugar. So and it's a cup a of sugar, sugar tea or sweet tea. Okay. So it's going to be one cup of sugar to make one gallon of kombucha. So because of the size of my bag, I do two half cups. You're stirring that into your tea. You have the spigots because you don't have to take it out and wash it every time you want to take the, what do you call that thing, the SCOBY? SCOBY. Every time you want to take that layer out, you just drain it here and then put some more tea back in it to start it again. Is that right? Correct. So there's two ways to do it. A lot of people will not have a spigot and they'll pull the scoby out and put it in a bowl almost like a goldfish and they'll put a little bit of tea in there yeah. and then they will wash it out and make a new batch. Or you can do a continual brew like I'm doing uh -huh. and you just let this drain down in this into the spigots and then you fill it back up because you want to keep like about a cup's worth of juice at the bottom as your starter culture. So you've got your SCOBY, one cup of juice, which is your enriched probiotic brew, plus the new stuff that you're brewing, the new tea and sugar that you're putting in there. And uh, that's going to be your starter for your new first ferment. Well, you are very way into this because you've built <laughs> this, uh, yes. this special little wooden thing to hold your yeah, I like to hold your boo bottles, bottles. Yeah, it's just like all custom. Yes. As is this whole step van. So you got your Berkey there, huh? You're amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> Chopping up chunks of pear and put them in uh, five or six bottles. Today I'm going to do five bottles. And it flavors the drink. Correct. You're just adding a flavor to your drink. So here I've made 
roughly five pieces. Whoops, it looks like I've got a label. Probably don't need that in the drink. Sticker, I had my Mexican doctor friend come to my house and he cooked uh, dinner for us. It was a special dinner that his mother, uh, his mother's recipe. And as we sat down at the table, it was like fruit and chicken, and which doesn't sound like something you would normally have, fruit and chicken cooked uh -huh. in a casserole. Anyway, we sat down to dinner and he said, uh, there might be stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're in Mexico. We're thinking, you know, cactus spines, uh -huh. right? Nope, he forgot to take the stickers off the fruit. How funny. So we have the fruit in the bottles, and we're going to put the kombucha. So here you can see the cut up pear uh -huh. in there. I guess I don't have any ginger today. Sometimes I'll add ginger in there, so I'm just having pear today. And I just go over here and fill this up to oh, anywhere you want, just near the top. Some people that are hardcore into kombucha will say you should have only a certain amount of distance at the top. I found that you can do almost anything. You just have to let it sit longer if you want it to be carbonated, depending on... You have to have a little air at the top for the carbonation to work, don't you? No. Um, yeah, no. I think some. I don't know. I just... Do a judgment call. Uh, let me think about this for a second. The more space you have at the top, the more air you have, the longer you could do it because it would compress the air. If you filled it all the way up, it could break the bottle much sooner. Okay. There you go. Um, I just leave a gap anywhere from here up to three mm -hmm. quarters of an inch and it seems to work okay and you and you're carbonated in three four days it depends on how hot it is ah. but you know, the hotter it is the faster it'll carbonate I've had them carbon carbonate in two two and a half days and I've had it take as long as five or six days if it's cold in the winter how do you tell you taste it uh, when you pop the lid, oh, you get a, f you, you get, get you get some spurt. pressure. You get some pressure, yeah. Right, and if okay. it's just going crazy, then you know. Right. After two days, you've got a, it like almost erupting on you. Then you know it's done. Uh huh. You made this how long ago? I made this probably about two weeks ago is when I started it. Yeah. So I would have created the original black tea and put the sugar in it and started the fermentation about two weeks ago. Yeah. So it took about seven days to get the first ferment. Uh -huh. Then I put it in this bottle and added pear flavored pear and little slices of ginger. So when you drink it, mm -hmm. you can just sort of not have the fruit unless you want to, but just uh, take a sip and have the okay. stuff. And it should taste sort of like a, all right. Well, that's very pleasing. I get the pear taste. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem very carbonated, though. Yeah, you can let it carbonate more by mm -hmm. letting it sit out longer. It's very refreshing. And you put it in the refrigerator, and the carbonation stops, and it sort of locks it in so you can drink it. Thank you, Seven. This is a new thing for me. Kombucha. Did I get it? You got it. <laughs> Thanks. So now I'm going to stir this in so that the sugar gets all stirred in and melted into the brew. And then I need to wait until this gets to be room temperature. So it's going to take like a half an hour and I just let it sit. Once it's at room temperature to where I don't feel any heat coming off of it, then I'll take this pan of this brew of black tea and sugar and come over and here and dump, dump it, it in the to top. replace what we drained out into the bottles. Exactly. And oh yeah, and you don't dump the hot stuff in there because it would kill the bacteria. Exactly. Oh, only we use better words than bacteria. What was the word? Scoby. Scoby. Oh yeah, we use scoby. It's not bacteria. It's scoby. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.